If I'm going to teach you, give me instruction, how am I going to do it? That's important. Because that'll stop a lot of uh, stuff. As you notice, a lot of stuff we got is, is how we feel. It's not because God said anything about it. It's personal. He even tells us how to deal with personal stuff. Matthew 18, go to the done. Now we don't, we got to be mature to do that, okay? But it's still in there. And when you let the law dwell in your house, rule in your heart, you grow in what? You perform that which is good. How do you know how to perform that which is good? You study it, you see it, you live by it, and you roll with it. Brother Beth? Um, yeah, something that I want to say. Uh, the Bible, I, I've always told people, the Bible is a road map or a guide through your life or through life. Because the mixture of relationship with people and everything, it hurts. But that's when you have to be a mature person. Right. Just like it hurts to discipline your kids, but you do it. Why do you do it? Because you understand some things. Mm -hmm. But it takes the mature one to do that, not the other way around. Right. Okay. Uh, the above section assures you that the Bible has everything. That's basically what you just said, yeah. what I got there on the bottom. Right. The, above, the above text assures you that the Bible has everything in it to live a godly life. That's kind of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, we must learn how to please God rather than rendering to him service we think. Because when you, when you do it that way, you create your own form of whatever. Yeah. And you're thinking, okay, this is good for me, so it ought to be okay. Well, this ain't for you. So you need to find out where the person is. You understand this if you've ever been in any kind of relationship. It's not about you when it comes to giving that person a gift or something to appreciate or whatever. You need to know what it is they like. Huh? Right. You know? You, oh, I won't have to go too far into that. I just need some connectivity. Connectivity. I ain't got it. <laughs> connectivity. Elisha, do me a favor. Go up there and hit that. Uh, and just hit it to the right. Give me the next slide, cause I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And thank you, Brother Beth, for that. I, I wanted to elaborate. I just didn't have the time because she said some real good things. Being present in Bible class is not good. It's not I. Right. What well, my experience is not even uh, simply beneficial. What I'm finding out is vital. I just changed that word this morning. I think I had something else. No, I had it there, but I, I folded and I capitalized it. Right. It's about, you know what vital means? That means if you ain't got the vitals, you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. When they come, you come to the doctor's office, they're checking all that stuff, making sure it's kind of normal enough. If you, hey, look, if you, if you ain't got no blood pressure, if you ain't got no pulse, if your heart is not beating, yeah. you're dead. So coming to Bible class, in, in my experience, Okay. If you 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 got you got to get here, because right, I'm finding out a lot of the questions we have during the weekend. I'm looking at them, listening or on the other end of the phone or whatever, and I'm saying, yeah, I talked about that three months ago, six months ago, seven months ago, a year ago. Okay, we'll do it again. So, uh, <laughs> so being present in Bible class is vital to your Christian growth. However, this is not something anyone should force you to do. Right. I'm not going to take you behind me. You can't do that. I don't have energy for that. Especially when you're talking to grown folk. Grown folk may not be grown in the spirit, but they have enough cognitive ability to know, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. If you know you need to do this, man and woman up. Do it. It's, it's, I'm sorry, y'all. It's really that simple. Yeah. You either want it or you don't. If you don't, that's okay. That's that's your personal thing, though. Right. I can't give it to you. I can't give you desire. That's something that is born and boils up from within you. I can't give you that. You, If you don't have desire, you just don't have it. And that's going back to leadership. That's why desire is important for the office. That means it came from within. They can't get that. We should 
never have a leader that has not shown that they have a desire to learn this word and to have this word uh, and, and show that type of uh, fervency, even if it's just by being present when we're supposed to be present. And you, if y'all mind, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm telling you for a reason. You should never, okay, be tolerant of a leader that does not have a passion to teach you, okay, to go after this word um, for whatever reason. If they don't, not worthy to stand before you. Is that focus and what we desire, we should always pray, pray for them, pray for everybody. But the Bible talks about being meek. You know what you do with people that is meek? It says pray for them. See that? Why are you praying? Because <coughs> prayer will be the thing that influence circumstances that will influence their heart. If they are having a heart to use you or personally or the church, and you you peep that, the Bible does not require you to use. I don't know why people just don't, you know, it says, oh, my bad, I just thought about why we don't know that. <laughs> don't study. How about that? If you don't study and you fall into the trap of, oh, it, I'm just supposed to give it to him, just supposed to give it to him, guess what? You've hurt yourself also and hurting them because now you're inhabiting, uh, uh, what's that? Enabling, yeah, you're enabling them. But if you knew that you had, don't have no obligation to do that when you know you're being used, you have an obligation to pray. Somebody called me a couple weeks ago. I really didn't have it. In 23 and 5, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Your profession is what you do, but what you do should also be what you talk. This is the scripture that tells you to walk the walk. Okay, if you talk the talk, walk the walk. So. Hold fast the profession of, and y'all know about the hour. The hour's not actually there, but it's accommodated. It don't change nothing. Our faith without wavering, for he is faithful to promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Provoke not in a negative sense, but to encourage. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, it's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? But you can't get none of that when you ain't here. You don't even know what's being taught when you're not here. Because you feel like, man, the church ain't got this. The church ain't talking about that. We ain't learning nothing. No, you are not learning anything. Yeah. If you hear and you walk in your profession, the profession is what if you, you say you're a Christian, then that should tell me what you do. Right. It's right. profession. Right. Profession is what you do. Let us consider one another pro pro to love and good works. How is also this done? Not forsaking the assembly on ourselves together as a manner of some is. We talked about the difference between missing, not coming, and forsaking. Okay, it's a whole different thing. Um, but exhorting one another, exhort. And so much as you see today approach, let me um, say, exhorting, you look up this word, <coughs> exhorting has with it the imagery of calling one to your side. It's almost like being in step in the military. So you, if you're exhorting somebody, you're saying, you know, I see you. I want to help you. This is what we do. I'm going to go left. I need you to go left with me. You cannot exhort. Watch this. You cannot exhort, though, if you don't know what step to take. You cannot exhort if you're not present yourself. The only way you call somebody to your side to do as you do, like Paul is saying, follow him as you follow Christ, mm -hmm. you yourself have to be walking the walk, talking the yeah. talk in your profession. Got it? Got it. All right. Um, move forward, First Peter 2, 1 and 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings as newborn babes, we talked about newborn babes. Desire is something that has to come from the inside. You can't give it. Why am I saying this now? Because it's time out for us, those that are in this, been in this a while, stop getting discouraged over people you baptize and don't come back. You can't give them what they don't have. You cannot give it. You just can't. I, I don't know how more I can stress that. Because what That's happens with that, we'll, we'll do good, and we'll, oh, people get baptized, oh, oh, and then we come to Luke, they don't do God. What happens? That is between them and God. You do what you can to reach out, 
snake crawl. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. Uh, you gotta, whoever bought, brought them, you know, that guess, you, nobody should have to even tell you to check. Right. 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 Nobody should have to tell you that. Right. Unless you got a growing on it. But if you good on that, go do it, go do it. Now, and what you'll find out is that <laughs> nine times out of ten, it's not something you want. Uh, let's see where we at. Newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word uh, that you may grow thereby. Seems to me that the Bible is equating learning, desiring with what? Grow. Our mission. Say so. That's very good. But then there's the second part. And if you didn't know, this is, it's really that mission is modeled around the Great Commission. In Matthew 20, uh, 28 and uh, around 20. So what, 19 rather. Uh, 18 and 19. So what you're doing is that you're teaching, okay? And, and then when they're baptized, it tells you about that second piece, you teach again. But I can't teach who is not going to be judged. But you can't teach who is not going to be judged. You just can't do it. Some of the tragedies that people have, though, is that they approach the Bible like it's just a regular book, and they say, because they can, listen, recite words. I, I neglect to say read because read requires comprehending and understanding. They recite words. Just because you can look at that Bible and say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. By him were all things made, and without him was not anything made that was made. Do you know what that means? You can read it all you want, but do you know what that means? So reading requires you to understand what it is you're reciting out of your mouth. Understand, brother. In Acts two and verse number forty-two, you find these words: They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread, and prayers. So you will find the example of looking at this stuff, studying it. Uh, some of the context I could give you about this study. One reason it was important for them to assemble, because guess what? Again, uh, now history tells us this. I'm not talking about me talking historical knowledge right now that you have in that day, in that area, about 3% literacy among the people. So guess what they're not able to do like we are able to do? They're not getting up from service and going home and got a Bible and a concord. They ain't got none of that. And if they had it, they wouldn't know what they're looking at. <laughs> they had to come and assemble, and therefore having a desire, they would be there when the Bible study occurred. The apostles say, hey, y'all, we finna uh, do whatever. Boom, they in there. Why they in there? Because they're trying to learn this stuff, they're trying to grow. Uh, and if you could read, those were not the uh, uh, folk like us. Y'all know what I mean. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. If you could read in that day, you were of uh, the aristocrats. Mm -hmm. uh, you was up there, you know, you had a little chain. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who are you? Whose are you? Okay, you are a Christian. Now, depending on who he's talking to, okay, just know, I'm just giving you this so you will know it, okay? I do not have time to expound on it, but there's debate about, and I'm talking about in church, there's debate about whether or not the word Christian here is used derogatorily toward people that believe in Christ, okay? so. Just know that that's something that is said. However, however, for our purposes on, on this morning, it's not really that important. The point is, you identify with a certain doctrine. Okay, you identify with a certain doctrine, thereby identifying you as Christian. Are y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. If you say certain phrases, it's been a certain order. That, you know, when you hear, if, if you hear, uh, I'm trying to think of one, uh, aim high. There you go. Aim high. When you hear aim high, I think air force. Because that's they, that's their slogan. You know? uh, just think about it that way. He, they identify with that. So when you see Christian, these are the three verses in the New Testament where you will find this word. 1 Peter 4, 16, though, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, 
for the letter of the Lord my God on his behalf. So to be identified with this doctrine, do not be ashamed. Let me tell you what caused the shame, though, when you identify with this doctrine. I'm going to tell you to that. I'm going to tell you what will cause you shame when you call yourself a Christian or identify with this doctrine. I'm a Christian. Oh, yeah? ain't been doing that and you meet the person that's not and they start going in on questions and asking you stuff, perhaps they interested you're going to be ashamed real quick, you know why? because you don't know, you profess you remember profession? you professing something you don't know you claiming something you really ain't about and we all know what that is that's called being fake <laughs> that's too hard, I'm sorry y'all that's, right. that's, that's how I know how to do it that's right. I know how to do it you are a child of God. You have this here. Um, oh my God! I, I want because I want to move a little bit. These are just some some verses talking about the family. Let me get Ephesians three and fifteen. That's one I just really like. I'll deal with that one because I do. I, I have a certain slide. I want to get to section two. So Ephesians uh, three and fifteen says, "Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named." I like that verse because what it does is it gives you a sense that you're not alone even when you don't have people around you bottom. You're not alone even though you don't have people or Christians or other like people around you bottom. Because the Bible teaches that we are not just here. We're there. That's right. As family. Citizens. God expects you to grow. Hey, you see our growth is going to keep coming up. We got the Great Commission. We talked about that. Teach who? Mm -hmm. See, I'm here to equip you, give you learning, give you understanding. If I don't teach you something that you didn't know, then I'm not teaching. If I if I keep telling you what you think you know, and, and it's on that level, you don't grow. Growth takes, you know, some stretching. Mm -hmm. some, some things have to happen. So with this being right here being said, if you are going to go and teach all nations, don't be ashamed. Because for you to go and do that, you had better study. You had better design the word. Maybe one or two or three of us can go and teach all nations. But that's effective to a level. Imagine if 50 of us could do it. Now, now we, re we really changing something. We, we do print. Oh, Lord, you know, you want to shoot some stuff and talk to me that's a little too much mercy. Sorry, sir. All right. Well, let's, let's try this. How about 50 people try to reach the level of understanding this material right here the way I understand it? And go out there and tell somebody else. You might. You might. I'm not, I'm not saying you will, but I think your chances will be better the more equipped that you are. Does that make sense? Anything you want? You spend more time on the gun range, what happened, Brother Moore? Simple. That's what happened. Okay, uh, we used to say this as kids. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw this in here right quick. As kids, I remember when we used to get in a little fight. And then depending on who you're dealing with, they might throw, throw you a monkey wrench you ain't dealt with before. Right. So guess who got to know what to do? You, if you want a teacher that can help you beyond the point that you are currently at. If they cannot, then they cannot have the, that's not a definition of a teacher. It doesn't work that way. Okay, uh, next slide, move forward. These are just five to move forward, because I want to get to something. I might not get to it. These are just five steps. This stuff will come back. I really want to get to something else. Go ahead. Uh, go. Go. Can you move? I've seen this before, right? We go over the scriptures and talk about. So here's the thing. Uh, we understand about the name and all that. We, we, we get that. The point is what's being taught. Because depending on what's being taught, then you have to have all those things. The Bible teaches unity. Oneness is taught. 
That doesn't mean we'll all look the same. Because we don't have to look the same to be the same. Next one. I'm, I'm, I'll come back to all this because I know I'm, I'm flowing through it. Christ prayed for oneness. So don't tell me that it's not supposed to be no oneness. It's supposed to be oneness. We get thrown by this sometimes because we think that that means everybody will agree and do the same thing the same way. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen even among your own brothers and sisters. Part of the reasons for that is sometimes it's personal. Sometimes it's just simply they don't know or ignorant. Yeah, keep going. So this one has animation, so you might click it a few times. Uh, yeah, this is simple. I'm trying to... Keep it real simple, right? This is imagery, some of us are visual, so you all see it this way. Christ is the head, there's a scripture for it. We make up the body, according to Corinthians, chapter 12 is gonna tell us some of that. And you also have it here in Ephesians chapter one, 22 and 23. Uh, next slide. Uh, go, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're baptized out of something, whether it be in the world, whatever, and into the church the Bible speaks of. The reason I said it like that, the church that the Bible speaks of, it only speaks of one church. Mm -hmm. Listen close. Don't even look up there. Look at me. Listen close. Don't look up there. Look at me. Learn what the word church means, and you won't have no problem. Mm -hmm. Learn what the Bible says the word church means, and stop pulling what you learned yesterday or, or, or about it today or about it whenever. Go back to what it says. Don't tell me that word God is, is important and you don't want to go back to that meaning. Because that's what he actually says. So the word church simply means assembly. That's all it means. It has no religious connotation when they are using it. It, it just doesn't. Um, bikers today understand that. Certain organizations understand that because they use the word like this. Oh, we're having a church. Do we think church is a place or a thing or whatever? It's not. It's an assembly. That's, that's all it is. So we were thrown and, and damning uh, Bible versions. And say, oh, that version comes from the devil because it said in uh, Romans chapter 16, 16, salute one another with the holy kiss. The assembly of Christ salutes you. Ah! <laughs> that's what it means. It means assembly. But you don't know that if you haven't desired and it's in the milk of the word and you won't know that if you believe what you already know is all there is to another life next next slide oh man come on uh let's go that ain't it i'm gonna keep going keep going going to i tell you stop right there right there that's it don't end here for the day y'all know what you're looking at Look at it for a second. I'll speak on it. Let me do it this way. I'm start from J and I'm going to move up. The Church of Christ is Church of the Firstborn. The Church of Christ is Spiritual House. The Church of Christ is the Body of Christ. The Church of Christ is One Body. The Church of Christ is House of God. The Church of Christ is kingdom of God's dear son. The church of Christ is church of God. All of that stuff is in the Bible. There's the scriptures for it. If you're a traditional person and you're in here right now, I'm sorry that didn't feel good, but here's what you need to know about that moment. Go back to that moment and live where you are right now about that not feeling good. Let me tell you what just happened. Now you gotta deal with something that you've been taught for a long time and your brain trying to protect you from something that it believes is wrong. <coughs> However, your brain can also keep you ignorant if you let it. That moment when you felt uncomfortable about the name is what I call your red pill, blue pill moment. Either you're gonna go back to sleep or you're gonna take this red pill and you're gonna learn something what's real. What happened in the movie? Blue pill, go back to everything else, you know, everything the same, everything, you know, I'm on autopilot. Red pill, you wake up and you get to look around and see how many people sleep. And then you meet your teacher. And your teacher say, Neo, hmm. <laughs> you're the one. What do you mean you're the one? You're the only one that's gonna do what you need to do to save who needs to be saved and go 
out there and do the work. I wish we could just hook you in the chair and upload you with the Bible, but we can't. <laughs> but you have to have a desire, listen to what I'm going to say, to deal with what's real. Unfortunately, some people would rather say, 